Yes, the Cubs are in town for three games, three huge games if you're a Cub fan, and there are lots of Cub fans in the ballpark tonight. The Cubs at 83 and 73, their magic number is four. The Marlins trying to play spoilers as they enter the final week of this 2007 season. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Welcome to what should be interesting theater for the next three nights. And it starts tonight, Tommy, with the Cubs. Their magic number is four. There are Cub fans streaming in to Dolphin Stadium. And it's a Cub team that really has turned it around in the standings. They've got a lot of momentum. One of the reasons why their outstanding outfielder, Alfonso Soriano. Yeah, they've really turned things on in the month of September. They have a number of guys hot, but one of the keys, their leadoff man, Alfonso Soriano. He hit four home runs on their most recent homestand. Right now, Soriano's on a nine-game hitting streak. This guy has had four 30-30 years in his career, and he's quite a catalyst at the top of any lineup. The Cubs spent a lot of money for him, but he has been on fire in the month of September. The club, the Cubs as a team in September, have hit 38 home runs. Soriano certainly has contributed to that. Look at it in September. 307, eight doubles, 12 home runs in the month of September for Soriano. Oh, and by the way, he's 8 for 17 with a home run against Dontrell Willis. And this would seem like a layup, a three-game lead with six games left, but as Cub fans will tell you, there are no layups. I mean, since 1935, the Cubs have been in only three postseasons since then. Our Pennzoil pitching matchup lefties in this one. Ted Lilly's been very good for the Cubs. They spent a lot of money on him as well, 15 and 7 with a 3.78 ERA. Dontrell Willis going for the Marlins. Now the Marlins beat Lilly earlier in the year and Willis beat the Cubs. So there you have it, our Pennzoil pitching matchup. For the love of Ivy, can the Cubs make it? Last time Lou Pinella saw the Marlins, the fish swept them. The Marlins have won seven in a row against the Cubs. A three-game series opens tonight at Dolphin Stadium. I'm a student. I grew up in Philadelphia. What are you doing, sweetie? I am texting, Mom. But I go to school in Delaware. Mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell, so you can see that they're My brother goes to school in Prague. Jak samaj Prahu. I got a bunch of friends who study in Chicago. So I need a network that works where I live. A place called Philaware, Prague, Chicago. He's back. Yep. The new AT&T works in more places like Philaware, Prague, Chicago. C.C. Sabathia of the Cleveland Indians. And you're on MLB.com, where baseball is always on. Florida brought to you by your local Toyota dealers and the full-size 2007 Toyota Tundra by AT&T. See what's new from the new AT&T. Visit AT&T.com for details. By Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And by Bennett Auto Supply, our prices bring you in, our people bring you back. Our telecast tonight available in high definition for a list of cable and satellite providers offering FSM Florida HD, along with channel numbers, log on to FSMFlorida.com. Dolphin Stadium tonight, the Cubs, the Marlins. That noise you hear in the background, Cub fans. Dontrell Willis takes a peek up at the seats. Dontrell Willis, of course, used to be a Cub, a Cub farmhand before being traded to the Marlins. And tonight, he goes up against the Cubs, who are at 83 and 73. Alfonso Soriano watches that one soar all the way to the backstop. It is 1-0. Soriano... The Cubs left fielder, the Cubs catalyst. Tommy just documented all the numbers that he's got and the season that he's had. 
He has hit Willis well, 8 of 17 with a home run against Dontrell. Did not have a good series when the Marlins were at Wrigley Field. Drives that one into right field. Hermida turns and makes the catch. In case you're wondering, our weather report brought to you by Mikasuki Resort and Gaming. Come play our way. 77 degrees, 80 percent humidity, and rain is possible. It's not never a good sign as you open up a, a three-game series. Obviously, these games have to be played for the Cubs. So if there's rain, we will be here for a while, and there's expected to be rain throughout this three-game series. Here's DeRosa, and he takes outside. But, Rich, it's September. It's South Florida. Rain is always possible. In the air, Hermita doesn't see it. You see his arms up, and now he does, and he makes the catch. Not until the last minute. All right, Cubs lineup brought to you by Toya. You've seen Soriano. You've seen DeRosa. Here comes Derek Lee. Aramis Ramirez having a great season. Matt Merton has put together a solid year. Giovanni Soto, an outstanding young catcher for the Cubs. Craig Monroe, the former Tiger. Ryan Terrio, the shortstop. And Ted Lilly's in the nine spot. You know, they're just coming off a homestand against Cincinnati and Pittsburgh where they had five or six of their offensive players just on fire. The top three in the order, Derek Lee, certainly, certainly one of those. And here is Lee, the former Marlin. Willis sails it outside. Not only did they get hot against Pittsburgh, but they, they beat a trio of lefties in Pittsburgh. It's the fourth lefty they faced in a row. Going back to the weekend, they beat Zach Duke, Tom Gorzolani, and Paul Mahalam. Well, they're a righty-heavy lineup. When you, you get popped from Soriano, Lee, Ramirez. Derek Lee fouls it back, and it counts two and two. Pitching coach for the Marlins for the next six games. If you missed it on the Marlins on deck, Freddie Gonzalez talking about Rick Kranitz, who was offered a contract to next year. He wanted to explore his options, and the Marlins felt they needed to move on. And so Rick Kranitz will not be the pitching coach next year, nor will he be the pitching coach for the next six games. Here's the 2-2 to Derek Lee. And it's outside. It's 3-2. and two. Yeah, I talked a little bit with Steve Foster. A couple of years uh, as a pitching coach in the minor league, so certainly experienced in that area. And has seen all these guys all year in the bullpen when they've been warming up, getting ready for games. At the knees, Dontrell Willis goes 1-2-3 through the Cubs here in the first. This is Andrew Miller from the Detroit Tigers. Here's the 1-2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Oh, brother. And you're on MLB.com where baseball is always on. During the season, I watched Harris become an all-around team player. Wright puts his team first, so I put my team first. At first, Harris wasn't part of a team. Now she's the heart of it. Wright's an awesome player. He'll even catch the ball with his bare hands. Major League Baseball supports the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Here, kids learn values like teamwork. Of course it's about the team, but I did have five home runs and 45 base hits. Major League Baseball and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together, we create a positive place for kids. Steroids can really damage your body. They can cause tendons to tear and bones to stop growing, damage kidneys, destroy the liver, even cause heart attacks and strokes. Not to mention, something else they can do to a guy's body. Find out more about the dangers of using steroids. Visit drugfree.org. Where were you when time stood still? Great plays, even better memories. Baseball's best moments, exclusively from MLB.com. Having a party? My friends and I are celebrating our new... Sap, por KFC. Now that is a Cubs fan. Marlins lineup brought to you by Toyota. Hanley Ramirez leads it off. Dan Ugla had a hot series against the Mets. Jeremy Hermita 
Miguel Cabrera, Mike Jacobs, Miguel Olivo has hit Ted Lilly well. Todd Linden with uh, the hammer still on the shelf. Brett Carroll's in center, and Dontre Willis, who has hit well over the last uh, month, is in the nine spot. Well, the Marlins faced uh, Ted Lilly earlier this season, but that was at a time when the Cubs were not playing well. He's had a solid year, a free agent sign. He signed a four-year contract, and he's won 15 games. 16 would be a career high for him. He's been solid. Hey, the Chicago Cubs have four starters this year that have given Lou Pinella 30 or more starts. And the Marlins can attest how nice that would have been to 2007 as Hanley Ramirez fouls it back into the seats. Ramirez at 333. The batting chase has seen Chipper Jones stay on top for about a week now. He's at 341 opening play. Matt Holiday 337. Chase Utley 335. And then Hanley at 333. Big overhand breaking ball from Ted Lilly. It's one of his four pitches. Theodore Roosevelt Lilly, who has been in a lot of places in his big league career, was originally drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers. Then traded to the Expos organization, then traded to the Yankees, then traded to the A's, then traded to the Blue Jays, and then signed as a free agent with the Cubs this year. His fastball fouled back. You know, they always uh, seem to say that left-handers sometimes mature at a later date. And he has had a solid career early on in his career. It just wasn't the case. I think that's kind of why he bounced around. Marlins hit, had that opportunity as a free agent last year and then signed the nice contract with the Cubs. Marlins hit a couple of homers in that ball game in late May. Ugla and Cabrera. Hanley fouls this one back. And his last start, Lilly pitched well against the Reds. Seven innings, two runs. A pair of home runs, Adam Dunn and Edwin Encarnacion. 0 2. That's in. You can hear the groans from the Cubs fans, and they're out here in number tonight. The Cubs trying to get to the postseason for the first time since 2003. Of course, when they lost to the Marlins. In the league championship series, Hanley lines it into left field. Soriano skips in and makes the catch. Tell us about Ted Lilly. Well, we were talking a little bit about uh, some of the stuff that he features. A good free agent sign, no question about that, with his 15 wins. He's sneaky because he has that big over the top curveball, then the fastball kind of sneaks in on hitters, and he has command of all four pitches. Here's Uglin out. Who has a couple of home runs and just three at bats against Lilly? One of those was in that May start. And Dan's hot right now. He takes a strike. Doug was pumped his average up close to 250. Smacked his 31st home run the other day. As you see, had a, a very good series at Wrigley Field. That one comes a long way. It's not quite Barry Zito like, but it's close kind of an interesting comparison because there were a lot of uh, comparisons with those two left-handers being on the free agent market this past winter. Ted Lilly four years 42 million dollars. Zito got a little bit more money into center but you know what Lilly's been the better sign so far. Hey Rico brings to the defense let's check out the Chicago Cubs defensively we know about the gold glove of Derek Lee's made just seven errors this year, DeRosa has started at five different positions. Ryan Terrio, just 11 errors. Aramis Ramirez, possibly a gold glove at third. Soriano, Monroe, and Merton in the outfield. And Giovanni Soto behind the plate. Hermita takes a strike. Jeremy trying to finish the last week of the season on an up note. He's had a terrific second half, and he lines that one into left center. That one's going to get to the wall, off the wall, and it bounces by Soriano. Monroe picks it up. Hermita's got himself a two-out double, and it'll bring Cabrera to the plate. So far, the first three Marlins hitters have had pretty good swings against Ted Lilly. That, an exceptional swing from Jeremy Hermita. 
He hits lefties well, mainly because he stays back and is not afraid to take advantage of the opposite field. That was double number 29 for Jeremy. And now Cabrera sitting on 33 homers. He got to Lilly in that May game. Lilly starts him inside with a fastball, and it's 1 0. Clouds above. But not a bad sunset here in South Florida. And it could be a wet three days. The 1 0. 2 0 to the Marlins third baseman. Mike Jacobs waits on deck. It is email Tuesday night. Ask the Marlins at FSNFlorida.com. Ask the Marlins at FSNFlorida.com. And we do realize we have uh, some Cub fans watching tonight, scattered, I'm sure, across the United States. And so we field all sorts of questions here on email Tuesday night. Fire away. Little conversation here. I think the talk could be first base is open and Mike Jacobs is on deck. Now, Lou Pinella comes uh, to the mound to see what his catcher Soto has to talk to Lily about. I'll tell you what his catcher Soto and Giovanni Soto the guy we're talking about has been a nice addition to this Cubs ball club. I think Lou wanted to just get his message across quickly. I'd be surprised if Miguel sees much to hit here with first base open. They're not booing. They're just greeting the skipper of the Cubs. They're looing. <laughs> and as expected. Now those are Marlin fans booing. They're not looing. Brings Jacobs up now with runners at first and at second. Jacobs has had success against lefties this year. He's hit 303 with five homers against lefties so this is not an automatic let's just pitch to the lefty and get out of the inning move Jake had six hits in the series against the Mets I think a lot of times this year when Josh Willingham has been in the lineup he's still bothered by that soreness in his back he would be hitting behind Miguel against the left hander Lily misses up and in and the ironic thing about that is that Jake has hit left handers better than Josh Willingham this year Marlins are without Willingham tonight without Cody Ross tonight and boy wouldn't that have been nice to have Ross who has had a great year against lefties in the lineup tonight Ross hamstring Willingham back Jacobs swing and a miss. Marlins trying to play spoilers and hopeful that Willingham either late in this series or in the Met series up in New York might return. <laughs> Lily's 1-1. One, one. And it's 2-1 and one. calling balls and strikes is Andy Fletcher. Mike Riley at first, Jeff Kellogg at second, Chad Fairchild at third. Hermita a two out double Cabrera was walked intentionally. Lily would like to get Jacobs because the man on deck has really had great success against Lily. Olivo four for eight with three homers in his career against the lefty. Two and two. Good fastball, little power on power, but that's the the sneakiness of Ted Lilly. Fastball's 89 to 90. And he pretty much threw it by Mike Jacobs. Well, I hope the Marlins fans have come to play because the Cubs fans have. They've got their game face on. They have their game faces on. Here's the two two. Jake fouls it off. We had a great shot of the Cub fan 
with those Harry Carey glasses on. <laughs> now we've we've already seen this guy with the uh, he's not from the Blue Man Group. He's a Cubs fan. Well, God bless him. It's been a hundred years since they've won a World Series. Two and two to Mike Jacobs. Strike three called. Ted Lilly strikes out Mike Jacobs and the Marlins leave a couple and we're underway. Cubs Marlins scoreless. Bam! You fall down! Hey, you guys supposed to be in bed. Oh, yeah? Philadelphia Phillies. There's another one. Well out of here. And you're on MLB.com where baseball is always on. Okay, look. There's barbarians everywhere. It's very important. Focus. Eyes fully. Chin up. All right? Okay. And storm the castle. Storm the castle. Storm the castle. All right, back to your original position. Back to the starting position. Another perfect day at the park. Get a Coca-Cola family pack and enjoy four tickets, four Cokes, and four hot dogs for as little as $60. Hi, this is Cameron Lowe from the Texas Rangers. Exactly what's turned out to be. Boy, and that is a nasty pitch from Cam Lowe. And you're on MLB.com, where baseball is always on. Growing up, I used to spend my time at the Boys and Girls Club. The clubs are a safe place with all kinds of activities. I used to spend most of my time on the baseball field. Some things never change. Major League Baseball and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America believe that all kids should have a safe place. And Alfredo Amezaga were out on the mound. Tommy, a nice award to give to Alfredo. Well, the uh, Heart and Hustle Award uh, sponsored by uh, Major League Baseball alumni. Pleasure for me to give it to a guy my size. Uh, first of all, so and and you know how we feel about Alfredo Amezaga, so a nice award for him and certainly well deserved. Dontro Willis goes to work on the Cubs here. Aramis Ramirez, Matt Merton, Giovanni Soto, and Willis's fastball is fouled back into the seats. Ramirez having a terrific year at the plate and with the gloves. Tommy noted he might be the Gold Glove winner at third base in the National League. Here's the one one and a strike although he'll get competition from Chipper Jones who's had a very good year defensively and Pedro Feliz Pedro in San Francisco Feliz. three good candidates right there one two pitch Willis misses down low Ramirez two for 14 in his career against Dontrell. Cubs have done it with outstanding pitching, pretty good defense, and pretty good offense. Not overpowering offensively. But you know, I think another thing, Rich, that's helped, they've gotten hot at the right time. We've talked about the hitters that have been hot. They're 15 and 8 here in September. That went into the Marlins' dugout. Boy, what a difference, too, Tommy. From when the Marlins saw him, the the Cubs in late May were swept by the Marlins. The Braves came in and then beat them two games, and that was full meltdown mode. That was the Barrett Zambrano dust up in the dugout. That was Pinella getting ejected. And at that point, after the two losses to the Braves, they were 22 and 31. Look at their last 12 at 10 and 2. Right now they're at 83 and 73. And of course, a three game lead in the Central. Having won 10 of 12. Magic number at 4. 
tell you what, uh, Ramos Ramirez is uh, one of those power hitters who's tough to strike out. He, he drives in runs. He's driven in 100 runs, fifth time in his career, and he's only struck out 65 times this year. 3 2. He fouls it back. Let's throw out our first email of the night. It's from our buddy Conk the Caveman. His MLB.tv is up and running. Wants to know if the Marlins organization is sold on Alejandro de Aza and any news on a new stadium. A two part question from Conk the Caveman. The 3 2 pitch is hit in the air to left. Linden is there and make the catch first. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Craig. Hey, thank you very much, Rich. Yeah, these Cubs have turned it around. They're now 10 games over 500. That's a 20 game turnaround from this time last year. But interesting race here down the stretch, though they have a three game lead in the Central with six to go. They'll play their final six on the road, the three here against the Marlins, and then they'll play in Cincinnati. Three. Look at the Brewers, though. Their six are home to St. Louis for San Diego. The Brewers have the best winning percentage at home, 48 and 27 in the National League. The Cubs are only three over 500 on the road, seven over at home. Certainly for the Brewers to have a shot here, the Marlins are going to have to play a role. And I think Milwaukee's thinking, try to pick up one or two here in this three games and then get a shot over the weekend. We'll see how it plays out. Well, as long as you're throwing numbers around, Craig, here's one to think about, too. As Matt Merton stands in, the only division in the National League that the Cubs are over 500 is the Central. They're under 500 against the West, under 500 against the East. That one fouled back into the seats. It's really uh, interesting the way things are coming down. San Diego in that uh, weekend series against Milwaukee, in Milwaukee, that could be interesting. And the hottest team in, in baseball right now, the Colorado Rockies, they've won eight straight. And the Phillies, of course, woke up. Tied for first in the wild card. That one is pulled foul. Let's answer Conk's email, shall we? Organization sold on Deaza. Uh, I would say no because he has struggled hitting the breaking ball, and I, I think he needs a lot of work in that area, so I would say no. Any news on a new stadium, and I would say no as well. As disappointed as we are to say that, that's hate to give Conk a couple of double couple of double no's. Lined into right field. Hermita got a good break and a sliding catch by Jeremy in right. Nice segue to the Marlins defense. Why not? We waited for that nice defensive play to let Rico bring you the defense. Brett Carroll with the start is 11th this year. In center field, Todd Linden in left. Jeremy Hermita, Cabrera, Ramirez, Ugla, and Jacobs around the infield. And Miguel Olivo handling Dontrell, who has a nice breaking ball going for him tonight. He's putting the slider where he wants to. Most people in Major League Baseball hadn't even heard of this guy, but he's made a real impact since he's arrived. Giovanni Soto, the MVP of the Pacific Coast League. Has added some punch behind the plate. The Cubs have been looking for an answer behind the plate all season long. Michael Barrett, of course, was shipped out to San Diego. They acquired Jason Kendall from Oakland. Yeah, Jason Kendall, more of a line drive type hitter. This guy has given him some sock after that tremendous year in the PCL. 26 homers, 31 doubles in 110 games for Iowa. Back to the mound. Dontrell's got it. Flip to first. Cubs go one, two, three in the second as well. More emails when we get back. What is the big deal with the high school baseball team? They have a tradition here. It's about playing the game right. It was one of the greatest stories in American sports history. A town with a population of just 586. Most of these kids have already put in a full day's work at their farm. If you're an Oreo baseball player, you're a hometown hero. We grow ball players here like corn. State's position that small schools are a financial burden. There's more at stake here than closing the school. All your boys get to play one last season without you. I have no idea what you're trying to kill. Now, we're going to hire a coach who's going to take the team down with them. To become a team again. Some of the guys think you don't know what you're doing, coach. They will need courage. Nobody expects you guys to win anything this year. 
discipline. Don't even bother coming out for the team. I heard you and my brother had some run-ins. What is going on? I mean, what's with you guys? And determination. Those smaller schools are absorbed by larger districts. They're turning into ghost towns. It's pretty old. Uh, it's twice your age, son. Now I'm giving it to you. This school is all the town has. We send a message to all the other schools. Norway isn't dead. Come on! Toledo. They don't lose, you have a problem next season. We decide what happens out here, all right? Not the papers, not the people in town. When you face the impossible. Kids in small towns, they have something. It's presented by authority of the Florida Mormons and may not be reproduced in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Florida Mormons. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Craig Minervini, back Dolphin Stadium. Ted Lilly is on the mound for the Cubs in a rather important game. The Cubs' magic number is four. There are six games left to play, three of them here against the Florida Marlins. And Lilly worked himself out of trouble in the first, got a strikeout of Mike Jacobs. And here comes Olivo. We told you he's had success against Lilly. He'll be followed by Todd Linden and Brett Carroll. Later on in this telecast, general manager Larry Beinfest will be by so if you have email questions for Larry Beinfest from Marlins general manager you can send them our way as well here's Olivo he fouls the pitch back to the screen four hits eight trips three homers against Lilly for Olivo and Tommy I mean what is it about Olivo every now and then you'll run into a pitcher a, a Bob Wickman a Ted Lilly a guy that Olivo just owns Billy Wagner there's usually a couple of things that go along with that. Number one, confidence. Number two, you just pick up the ball. Wherever those pitchers, the Wickman or Wagner or Lilly, wherever they release the ball, it just looks good, and Olivo picks it up easily. And then you just add that all together, and he puts together a bunch of hits. Big breaking ball, and that's working tonight for Lilly. See that fastball up, and this big curveball is his number two pitch. You can see he starts at about letter high, and it ends up around the knees. Here's Linden. And Todd fouls it back. Linden getting the start in left field with Willingham sore back. Todd had a, a nice series with five hits against the Mets. Swung the bat well from either side of the plate. And Lilly misses up. Yeah, just the, the last two games. You look back those two games, four for eight. Made some nice plays in the outfield, had a stolen base. Hits it hard and into left field. Linden has the Marlins' second hit of the ball game. Time now for the Just for Men stay in the game play. Brought to you by Just for Men hair color. Dontrell Willis against the Mets. Fourth time, Tommy, this year where he's left with the lead. And the bullpen has suffered a blown save. Stay in the game with Just for Men hair color. Brett Carroll now. Well, the one thing with Todd Linden and Brett Carroll, a couple of hitters that the Cubs haven't seen a whole lot of, Lily hasn't seen. Cody Ross's hamstring. And of course, Alfredo Amezaga better against righties. And so Carroll gets the start against the left hander. And Lily busts him up and in. And it's one and one. Interesting by play in between innings as Lou Pinella paces. Between innings, they showed highlights from the 2003 National League Championship Series. <laughs> Mike Mordecai's big three run double. And Cub fans, of course, with a sour look on their face. Booed vehemently. Hey, they should thank South Florida and the Marlins that there were plenty of good seats available. Oh, 
Carroll lofts it towards the bullpen. They are a, a, a franchise, obviously, one of the storied franchises, the lovable losers. 1908, the last World Series that the Cubs won. Since 1945, they've only been in the postseason three times. 1984, 1989, and 2003. One, two. Up the middle into center field, base hit. Linden round second, and he'll hold right there. Marlin season ticket deposit started just $100 for 2008 and are now being accepted. Secure your spot on the season ticket holder priority list today. 1 877 Marlins, the number to call. Now, Freddie has a couple of choices here with the left hander on the mound in, in Lilly. You probably see Dontrell uh, drop down a bunt with Hanley Ramirez on deck, but on the other hand, if uh, it gets to a certain situation in the count, he may let him swing away. Dontrell takes down low. No squaring there. And Tommy, you noted Willis with the bat. Look at that, 271 now. He had a good series against the Cubs at Wrigley Field. 11 for his last 21, 4 for his last 4. Dontrell with 16 base hits and 11 sacrifice bunts. I mean, he's done it all. Pretty good speed with Linden and Carroll. And one out in the bottom of the second. Dontrell pops it up, shallow right center. That's going to fall for a base hit. The bags are loaded for Hanley Ramirez. Willis has five hits in his last five at bats. And the Marlins with three consecutive hits against Lilly in business here in the second. Well, that's why I like uh, seeing Dontrell getting a chance to swing the bat. He's on fire, he's on a roll. He didn't hit this ball hard, just bloops it, but finds the right spot. Because he's Dontrell Willis, the outfield plays him almost like a regular hitter. A normal pitcher, the outfield might get to that shallow pop fly, but Dontrell, they're playing him normal position. Here's Ramirez now. He's 0 for 1. Hanley's sitting on 28 homers. It's one of the pitches that has really worked for Lilly this year, that backdoor slider. Hanley lined out his first time up and I thought had some pretty good swings during the at-bat. Hanley takes a strike. And the count is one and one. Without a grand slam in his young career. But what a young career it has been. Rookie of the year last year. Going after a batting title this year. No sophomore jinx for Hanley. One one pitch. Fouled at the plate. No sophomore jinx for a lot of Marlins who had their rookie years last year. Todd Linden, Brett Carroll, and Dontrell Willis, all with base hits, have loaded the bases. These are those situations I think the Marlins, if they strike early, it certainly puts a lot more pressure on the Cubs. They have a lot more riding on these games than the Marlins do. One, two. Good pitch. Jammed him. Dumps it into right field. DeRosa can't get it, and it lands. A base hit. The Marlins are on the board first. Two seeing eye singles. Oh. One from Dontrell Willis and one from Hanley Ramirez. Cubs fans are having visions of Bartman already <laughs> with a couple of blue base hits. Dontrell's falls. Hanley's falls. It's worth an RBI, too. DeRosa just can't quite get it with Merton sliding in in front of him. I 
can't believe you invoked the Bartman clause in the second inning. Second inning already, I know. <laughs> Here's Ugla. Well, Dan Ugla, one of the hotter hitters for the Marlins. And we told you he's homered twice in four trips against Lilly. Hey, by the way, give the base runners credit to advance. They have to kind of hold their ground, and they had to wait and see if DeRosa was going to catch that ball or not. So a good job by the base runners. Got a strike with the breaking ball. It's 0 1. No doubt there are a few Milwaukee Brewers who are getting ready to take on the Cardinals in about a half an hour. A few Brewers watching this one. The Marlins have scored first. And Lilly misses outside. Ugla has been able to drive the ball deep. 31 have left the yard. 10 were sacrificed flies. Got Hermita on deck. Ugla drives it to right field. Merton going back, shy of the track, on the track, makes the catch. Everybody tags, everybody moves up, including Hanley and Dontrell. And it's 2 nothing. Ugla delivers another sacrifice block. I think the Marlins have had good swings at that big curveball. Here it is again. Dan Ugla stays back on it and drives it the other way. That's a good sign. Sends Merton to the track. And again, everybody tagging up. Dontrell went from second to third. And Hanley went from first to second. Hermita. Lily misses down low. Jeremy doubled off the wall in left center back in the first. Couple big runs sitting out there right now. One and one. Hermita, one of the Marlins' best in the second half. A leg injury kept him on the shelf for the first two months of the season. 328 since the All-Star break. One and two. Well, the Marlins have made Ted Lilly work uh, already, not even through the second inning. He's thrown 43 pitches. Willis Ramirez. One, two. Breaking ball, Hermita jumps on it. Right center field and deep. Into the seats of ground rule double, and the Marlins have put four on the board here in the second. A big looping breaking ball that Hermita tracked as soon as it left Lily's hand. Well, again, talking about the way and the approach the Marlins hitters have had against Lily's curveball. Big curve. This one stays up. Jeremy Hermita has had two absolutely beautiful swings. Two doubles tonight. One to left center, and that one a one hopper over the right center field wall. But a big two out double driving in two. 30 doubles this year to go with his 17 homers. Production wise, what a quantum leap for Hermida this year as opposed to last year. I think at one point we were talking about is this a breakout year? And, and at that point in time, we said no, but I, I may change my decision on that. <laughs> Cabrera. Miguel drives at center field and deep. Monroe will have room and makes the catch, but the Marlins. Put four on the board. Couple of bloops. And then Tommy went all Portman on us. Four nothing, Marlins. 
I work in the movies. It's Monty? Later. I'm a kind of star, I guess. I live in Hollywood, but I work on Broadway in New York. Thank you, thank you. In Tombstone, Arizona. A part of South America you might not have heard of. Hi. Hi, Klaus. And London, England. Hi, I'm in the middle of something. Hi. So, I need a network that works where I live. A place called Holly York, Arizona, South of Maryland. Monty. Monty. What's the deal? The new AT&T works in more places like Holly York, Arizona, South of Maryland. Hi, this is Jimmy Rollins of the Philadelphia Phillies. Home run, Jimmy Rollins! And you're on MLB.com, where baseball is always on. Dontro Willis back to work. Craig Monroe, Ryan Terrio, and Ted Lilly in the third. Top of Marlins getting four in the bottom of the second. And Monroe pulls it foul. Monroe, a guy that has hit lefties well. And of course, with Dontro Willis on the mound, Monroe finds himself in center field. One and two on the former Tiger. Of course, the guy who was certainly instrumental in the Tigers uh, getting to the World Series last year, Monroe, had 28 home runs and 92 RBIs for Detroit. Outside corner, Dontro Willis gets the strikeout. Marlins and Cubs, Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. It's email Tuesday night. We've already got a lot of them stacked up for Larry Beinfest, the general manager of the Marlins, will join us in the fifth. But so far for the Marlins, a nice start against Ted Lilly. So far, so good. Dontrell is on a nice roll, good fastballs and sliders. And the offense uh, has done a little bit of damage, too, against Ted Lilly. Brian Terrio. Terrio's presence has been a, a pleasant surprise for the Cubs. Remember when the Marlins faced the Cubs, Cesarius Torres was still in that mix. Terrio was, was playing as well, but he's really taken over the position. He really has. He's added a little speed. He's played exceptional defense. He's made just 11 errors this year. Willis looks sharp tonight. No one two. Now obviously they see them a lot more than we do but I was talking with with uh, Cubs fans favorite Ron Santo longtime broadcast caster with Chicago and he said in his opinion Ryan Terrio might be the club's MVP. That's how much uh, impact he's had. Two two pitch in the left field that's a base hit. So the first hit for the Cubs is a single from the number eight hitter. Here comes Lilly. One of the most prestigious conferences in the nation now has its own network. And you can see over 400 live events, including 39 football games, 140 men's basketball games. The Big Ten Network is on the air. To ensure that you get these games in the Big Ten Network, call 1-866-WANT-B-10. Here is Lilly. And he pops up a bunt. And it's back over the screen and out of play from Rob in East Haven, Connecticut, a Cubs fan with a correction. And he's right. We were talking about postseason appearances and I was I was referencing the 
League Championship Series 84 89 and 03 I left out 98 when the Cubs were swept by the Braves in the division series so four post seasons since 1945 that's a foul tip as well and the counts 0 and 2 but but we always accept uh, corrections absolutely through, through emails thank you Brian Terrio's at first. Dontrell Willis working on him. With Ted Lilly trying to bunt again, and he fouls it back to the screen. Willis will get a strikeout. It's his third. And that's the first lap through the lineup. Back up to the top of the order. Alfonso Soriano. Jason and Jeffrey from Miami want to know, Tommy Hutton, which team do you think will win the World Series? Yeah, I've had fun talking with some scouts. We have the uh, availability of seeing a lot of scouts up in the uh, press area who are advancing for both American League teams and, and National League teams and man, everybody I talk to seems to really like the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim the way they play the game they have enough power they certainly have pitching they play good style of baseball Soriano with a big swing and a miss and it's 0 and 1 you know to, to say who I like I, I hate to say I like them because I just haven't seen them but uh, from what I hear uh, they could be tough in the American League. To be honest with you, I think the Cubs probably have the best mix going right now of the teams in the National League. Uh, the, the Diamondbacks are starting to fizzle a little bit. Uh, San Diego's lost four in a row. They're not playing good baseball right now. And ever since Chris Young has struggled in the second half, the Padres, not only in the standings, but in their playoff chances, have kind of fizzled a bit. And we just saw the Mets, and the Mets are old and have a lot of minor injuries bugging many different players. Mets were blown out last night by Washington. And those two back at it tonight. Washington has a 4-2 lead over the Mets in the second. Though the Braves are beating the Phillies 3-1 in the third. The Phillies have a tough road, Tommy, especially the next two nights. They get Hudson and Smoltz. Dontrell Willis strikes out Alfonso Soriano. Four punch outs for Dontrell and a 4 nothing lead for the Marlins. What is the big deal with the high school baseball team? And they have a tradition here. It's about playing the game right. It was one of the greatest stories in American sports history. A town with a population of just 586. Most of these kids have already put in a full day's work at their farm. If you're an Oreo baseball player, you're a hometown hero. We grow ball players a year like toy. It's the state's position that small schools are a financial burden. There's more at stake here than closing the school. All your boys get to play one last season without you. I have no idea what you're trying to kill. Now, Gonna hire a coach who's gonna take the team down with him. To become a team again. Some of the guys think you don't know what you're doing, coach. They will need courage. Nobody expects you guys to win anything this year. Discipline. Don't even bother coming out for the team. I heard you and my brother had some run-ins. What is going on? I mean, what's with you guys? And determination. Those smaller schools are absorbed by larger districts. They're turning into ghost towns. It's pretty old. Oh, it's twice your age, son. Now I'm giving it to you. This school is all the town has. We send a message to all the other schools. Norway isn't dead. Come on, Edgar, be here! Oh, Lee Toledo! They don't lose, you have a problem next season. We decide what happens out here, all right? Not the papers, not the people in town. When you face the impossible... Kids in small towns, they have something special. The only thing you can rely... It might be... It could be. It is. Holy cow. Harry, how are you? This well, must be. I'm doing fine there, son. And the Cubs are going to go all the way this year. That's not what you did. When I first got here, Harry said, don't do it to us again. No, don't do you have this again. No, no. I had that feeling too many years. What about those glasses? Uh, what kind of reaction do you get on those? I don't know. My daughter's not too embarrassed by it as long as she's on TV. This is my daughter, Jenny. And uh, we actually are Chicago residents who have been to live in Delray Beach for the last 23 years. But we're diehard Cub fans. But you got to be nervous, though. It's the time of the year nervous. when a Cub no, fan gets nervous because if you don't make... Nervous. No, we pray a lot. 
We really pray a lot. I mean, seriously. You know. Well, holy cow, was hey, your line? You guys got three fans for the Marlins here, and the rest are filled with... No, 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 no. Watch Let's it, there. The cops, All right, enough with Harry Carey, huh? But it's good to have his enthusiasm. You know what? Harry Carey always had great enthusiasm for the game of baseball, so we appreciate that. We love baseball. Holy cow. You got holy cow. Holy cow. Look, cow. Looks better than the voice from the similarity standpoint, guys. Take it away. <laughs> Soriano makes the catch on Mike Jacobs fly ball out in the third inning. Ted Lilly was touched for four runs in the second. Miguel Olivo and Todd Linden to follow here. Bottom of the third, South Florida. The Marlins a 4-0 lead over the Cubs. I love the enthusiasm and the passion. Olivo struck out back in the second. Lily with a changeup that floats over for a strike. He hasn't thrown too many of those. Big breaker is high. Lily last year with Toronto was 15 and 13 with a pretty respectable 4.31 ERA. That's a good hitter's part up in Toronto. He really bounced around nine big league games with Montreal 49 as a Yankee 38 games as an Oakland Athletic and then three years in Toronto. Olivo to left field pretty well hit that ball is off the wall. Olivo round first Soriano got to it quickly. Here's his throw Olivo safe. It almost looked like a sweet tag by DeRosa may have missed and Olivo gets in there with a double. Well, they're throwing that one back at Wrigley Field. It's into the bleachers, but this one just off the wall. Well played by Soriano with a strong throw, but the sweet tag. By, by the time DeRosa got the tag on Olivo, it was on his backside, and his hand was already on the bag. See, hand is on the bag. There's the tag finally applied. Here is Linden now. He singled back in the second. Went after a high fastball in the second inning. Linden started the parade of base hits. Linden and Carroll had solid hits. Willis and Hanley Ramirez had bloop hits. Hanley's drove in a run. Ugla with a sacrifice fly, and then Hermita with a big two-out, two-run double. So Rich Olivo is now five for ten against Lilly with three homers <laughs> and a double. Oh and two. We'll keep an eye on all the games around baseball tonight. Jimmy Rollins and Mark Teixeira have homered in that 3-1 Atlanta lead over Philadelphia in the four. The 0-2. That is strike three call. A gorgeous pitch by Lilly. Closing day for the Marlins against the Cubs comes Thursday at 4.05. First 5,000 cars, a Marlins flashlight keychain from Marooney. First 10,000 fans, a Marlins 2008 schedule magnet from Bank of America. Party at the Strike Zone starts at 2 with autograph sessions from Marlins players and celebrities. one marlins Brett Carroll now. He takes inside. Carroll single to left. Back in the second inning. The Phillies are going to face Hudson and Smoltz in games two and three of that series up in Philadelphia against the Braves. Tonight they get Chuck James and they're losing. 3-1. Merton is there and makes the catch. Marlins are done in the third. They leave Olivo out at second and it's 4-0. Fish. Frank hold on I'm a salesman I work in Virginia but I do business in Colorado Sacramento fly me in a little lower Flagstaff in San Antonio so I need a network that works where I live a place called Virgicolamento Flag Antonio Frank I'm back the new AT&T works in more places like Virgicolamento Flag Antonio 
Growing up, the Boys and Girls Club was a safe place where I was taught important lessons, like being part of a team. Teamwork. Teammates learn to play together, work together, and stick together. <laughs> Major League Baseball and Boys and Girls Clubs of America understand the importance for kids to have a safe place to learn and grow. Teamwork is what made us World Series champions. And the White Sox have won the World Series. Major League Baseball is a proud sponsor of the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together, they create a positive place for kids. Hey, this is Coco Chris with the Boston Red Sox. Coco doing it again. Out in right center. You're on MLB.com where baseball is always on. Here at Dolphin Stadium. Could this be the last time that that happens? Well, Dontrell has handled it well. I mean, he said it seems like the last couple of years there's always speculation that he could be traded. And as long as his name is out there, as long as he continues to stay solid and healthy, it's always a possibility. Mark DeRosa. Got Derek Lee, Ramos Ramirez to follow. And a strike. Mike Riley at first base. Saying DeRosa went after it. John Trell now four straight years. 30 or more starts. And he is a strike away from getting a, uh, a rather important strikeout in Marlins history. Here's the one two. That one misses down low. One more strikeout. He'll tie A.J. Burnett for the club record at 753. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And the count three and two. There's Derek Lee. It's outside. So Willis loses to Rosa. Here comes the duck. Outside. First of his final three appearances at Dolphin Stadium, at least this year, for the duck. Two Cubs All Star shortstops following Ernie Banks. I know Sean Dunstan. That's the first one that comes to mind for me. Sean Dunstan. Was it the. Have to think a little bit on the second one. Was it the Shano meter or the Dunstan meter? What was the uh, the sign that they had up at Wrigley Field? I, I don't know what sign they had, but he had a cannon for an arm. Yes, he did. Congratulations. Struck You've been selected to receive inning. a free Apple iPhone. And while Derek Lee isn't happy about that, it did raise $100 towards Derek Lee's charity because Dontrell Willis has pledged a hundred dollars for each strikeout that he has to Lee's charity that he started this year. That one is at the knees. Lee's daughter with a disease that has cost her vision in one eye. Project 3000 to find a cure for that uh, disease. Willis donated a lump sum of ten thousand dollars to begin the season and a hundred dollars for each strikeout. And he has struck out now 141 on the season. These are the situations that have given Dontrell trouble all year. He's, he's had good streaks and good innings. And then all of a sudden, he lets things slide away, be it a walk or an error behind him or maybe him even making an error. And I think if he keeps his, his focus and concentration, that'll allow him to stay out of these kinds of situations. 2-2. Two -two. 
And the count stays at two and two. Pete from Miami wants to know what exactly is a magic number and what does it mean? I leave the mathematical stuff to you, Rich. It's the number of games, whether wins or losses, as Lee lines it into the seats, that it would take for the Cubs to clinch the division. So if the Milwaukee Brewers, and Lou Pinella will tell you this, he's into crossword puzzles and, and number puzzles and all that. The Cubs have a three game lead with six to play. Time called, Willis will step off. It's the combination of Cubs wins or Brewers losses that would clinch the division. You add them up and it's four. So if the Cubs win four games, they win the division regardless of what happens to the Brewers. If the Cubs win twice and the Brewers lose twice, the Cubs will win the division. And to add to that, even if the Cubs lost the game, but if the Brewers lost, that magic number drops by one. 2-2. Two -two. Way outside. See Willis wiping that left hand. His last start, Tommy, he had trouble late in his start with the grip of the baseball. There were a couple times, in fact, one time where the Marlins manager, Freddy Gonzalez, and Mike Kozak came out to see if there was anything wrong with Don Schrock. Dangerous hitter on deck in Ramirez. Derek Lee just won't go away. No, he's uh, he's giving Don Trell a battle. And he mentioned the, the number of hitters, and Derek Lee is one of them that had a terrific home stand. He hit 458 with a couple of home runs. Another solid year, 41 doubles, and an on base percentage of over 400. Ground ball, Cabrera. Got one there. Ugly's turn. Got two there. Willis gets a double play. Dan Ugla has turned into one of the better pivot men in baseball. Here's the checkers double play of the game. That was a good at bat, but some good pitches by Don Trell. 5-4-3 to score that double play. A good pick by Miguel. He got a little bit of a hop at, at the end and a strong feed. Good throw over to Dan Ugla. Here is Ramirez. I was talking to Carlos Tosca the other day about defense, and certainly the Marlins have had an awful year defensively. But we got to talking about some of the bright spots, and he said one of them is Ugla, and the way he turns the double plays. It very quietly, and he's had other coaches and other managers remark it to him. Ugla is very good at turning the double play. Hanley to his left. Bobbles, picks, fires, got him. Willis, a leadoff walk, no problem. Couple ground balls, and he's out of the inning. The Marlins trying to rain on the Cubs parade, and so far it's 4 0. Miguel, you're from the Dominican Republic? Yeah, San Pedro de Macorís. How about you, Jose? I'm from Puerto Rico. Hey, Moose, where are you from? <laughs> Close enough. Mariners baseball. My, oh, my. Even an Oakland athletic can have a bad day. A day when his cat-like reflexes aren't so quick. A day when his golden glove seems a little less golden. Fortunately for the athletic, even on his worst day, He's the best in the business. It won't give you the draft order randomly until an hour before your draft starts. And I'm not a big fan of that. Hold on now. Got to interrupt you right there. You know, Ichiro's true value is 20 or 22. 24 is a very reasonable price. If I had to pick the best combination of cost and value, 
I might go with Ensberg. Well, we almost said at the same time I was going to punch Oh, my you. God. I was just going from a, a generic angle. Well, you know, you're, that's, that's... I'm generic. I'm just generic. We go out, you drink Bud Light. The MLB.com Fantasy 411. Now, Monday through Fridays, noon to 1 p.m. Eastern. In South Florida, if you need a car, truck, or van, who are you going to call? one 877 Maroney. And by Checkers. Checkers double drive through Two drive throughs to get you through fast. Cubs fans everywhere. Glad to have you at the ballpark. Yeah, we are. Three days. Actually, I think there are more Cubs fans than there were Mets fans in that series. They got the glasses, the shirts. I've seen uh, quite a few Sandberg jerseys. I think the Cub fans have better paraphernalia than the Mets fans. Dontrell Willis stands in and takes down low. Emails tonight. Ask the Marlins at fsmflorida.com. Email from Chad in Tampa wants to know, Rich and Tommy, if this is Dontrell's last home game as a Marlin. What's your favorite D train moment since he arrived in 2003? Hard to pinpoint one moment. I mean, his season of 05 when he won 22 games, just a, some steady games all year. Yeah, you know, we could ask uh, Larry Beinfest when he comes. He's not going to give us the answer about Dontrell, but his favorite Dontrell moment. Well, also if Dontrell's pitching his last <laughs> home game, he might uh, he yeah, might that, dance around that one. But that too. <laughs> Lily misses outside with a breaking ball, and it's two and two. I think winning 20 games is my favorite memory for Dontrell because that put him in a select group. Remember the Black Aces? And of course, for Dontrell, he was very proud of that moment. All right, bring back the duck. I got a name I may add quickly. Cubs shortstops for 500. By Kessinger, Don Kessinger. Fly. Don Dunstan, Don Kessinger. Hanley Ramirez, an RBI single in the second. Takes down low from Ted Lilly. It just happened by the Marlins put four on the board in the second. They had some seeing eye hits that certainly helped the inning. And a big blow by Jeremy Hermida. A two run double. You know, I give Hanley credit. He has stayed steady. He hasn't had that spurt the way Chipper Jones had, even Matt Holliday. It did, but he's kept that average right around 333 or 334 for about a week. Got a five game hitting streak now and 206 base hits. Up to the minute leaders, Chipper Jones down from 341, and Hanley fouls it back. GJ from Miami wants to know who do you think the Marlins MVP? Is this season? I think you're looking at it. How's that for an answer? That's why I saved that question. Okay. <laughs> we got our first email from prison. <laughs> I guess that's good. I don't know if they're a Nielsen home there or not. Two, two pitches pop foul. That's just good that they're staying out of trouble and emailing us, I guess. Yeah, but on the on the email it said download file, and I thought mm, better not. <laughs> Lily's been able to get out with that big breaking ball. All right, in the fifth inning, if you want to send an email for Larry Beinfest, there he is on the computer. General Manager of the Marlins. Ask the Marlins at fsmflorida.com. 
Rick in Miami wants to know, Tommy, I was surprised and kind of upset to hear that Jeff Conine, Mr. Marlin, was retiring. In the back of my mind, I was always wishing that he would return to the Marlins, even if only for one day. Well, let's see. Maybe we could get him to switch uniforms uh, one game over the weekend at Shea Stadium. But I don't think uh, Major League Baseball would uh, sanction that. As much as Niner has, I think, would enjoy that, he's got something else on his mind right now as the Mets try to, to clinch the East. Hey, he's smelling that postseason again. High pop, shallow center. Monroe is in. And he makes the catch. Marlins down in order. Four nothing. Fish. Got it. Call you right back. I'm a reporter. I'm based in Washington, D.C. But I cover stories in Beirut, Lebanon. Also, I work in Moscow. Mosham Nishat. I'll be right back. Suspect has proceeded backwards down the off ramp in reverse. Los Angeles, California. Request backup. Request backup. Roswell, New Mexico. So I need a network that works where I live. A place called Wabanon, Los Angeles, Oswell. The new AT&T works in more places like Wabanon, Los Angeles, Oswell. Gillespie never gives up, even if it's an 0-2 count. The big man taught me to be patient and wait for the right pitch. It's perseverance that's going to make Gillespie a household name. Power calls perseverance. Me, I think it's more of a gift. Major League Baseball supports the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Here, kids learn values like perseverance. I think Howe's a promising player. He just needs a little coaching. Major League Baseball and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together, we create a positive place for kids. I'd like a water. Jeremy, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just trying to get a water. Well, you're in the wrong position. You, you got to get your body in the right position. Focus on your target. Focus. Reach out, hit the target. Reach out, hit the target. There it is. See the result? Thanks, sir. Hey, one more thing. That hat you're wearing, they're now in Washington. And they're the Nationals. Florida Marlins Baseball está disponible en español vía SAP y es presentado por KFC. Matt Merton leads it off for the Cubs. The Marlins on top by a score of 4-0. We're joined now by the general manager of the Florida Marlins. Larry Beinfest is in the booth in the house watching Dontrell Willis shut down the Cubs so, so far at 4-0. And Larry, welcome to the telecast. We have emails stacked up for you. Let, let's have at it. All right, I uh, will throw out the first one. It's from Justin, wants to know, when you traded for Dontrell Willis, what were the scouting reports, and why did you put him in the deal? Well, he was in the deal. Obviously, it was a big deal with a lot of money. It was many, many trades ago, Rich, but uh, we were going to move Alphonse and Clement and create some payroll flexibility. Um, you know, we were looking for some players to, to help us in the future and for the 0-2 season. In Dontrell's case, he was, I think, 8-1 and in Boise, which is, his, you know, short season that year uh, he had always been a winner in high school um, good athlete um, a lot of upside left-handed a lot of energy all the things you see today and uh, he never looked back he just kept winning and uh, doing his thing you know what 11 and 3 in the minor leagues with the Cubs it's 16 and 2 in the minor leagues with the Marlins up the middle got one there got two there another double play grounder Dontrell got one in the fourth he gets one here in the fifth. Larry, we've already had a, a numerous emails as we, we take a look at this replay. Ugla to Hanley to Jacobs. Numerous emails wanting to know, is this Dontrell's last appearance as a Marlin at Dolphin Stadium? Well, you know, I'll answer it just the way you would. If you ask me about any of the players, Rich, right. um, I'll give you my pat answer, which is some players are less likely to be traded than others. And um, Dontrell's been a terrific pitcher here, part of our World Championship team. And knock on everything. He's doing a great job tonight. All right, hang in there. We got you for another half inning. Dontrell Willis, a very brief fifth, four nothing Marlins.
we have a special guest, kids. It's Tori Hunter of the Minnesota Twins! <laughs> Hi, this is David Wright of the New York Mets. David Wright with a walk-off hit. The Mets beat Rivera. And you're on MLB.com, where baseball is always on. No batting gloves, helmets, wristbands, elbow pads, sunglasses, gold chains, or earrings. No arguing with the umpire, stepping out of the batter's box, charging the pitcher, curtain calling, high-fiving, pointing to the sky, or kissing jewelry. Just baseball, damn it. The gloves you have take the stink. On an email Tuesday night from Dolphin Stadium, the Marlins and the Cubs open up a three-game series, and the Marlins are on top 4 nothing. Larry Beinfest, the general manager of the Marlins, joins us. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton and Larry Beinfest. We had another question, wanted to know our favorite Dontrell Willis moment in uh, his career. So for you, your favorite Dontrell Willis moment. Well, hopefully it's tonight with a complete game shutout. I'm in. Oh. But um, <laughs> actually, uh, actually a fun story. Um, Jim Fleming, our vice president of player development scouting. The first day Dontrell came to Melbourne at the time in 02 from the trade, he called me. Dontrell had just thrown his first bullpen. He said, you got to come see this guy. He turned his back to the plate, kicked his knee up into his face, and chucked the ball right up against the backstop. He said, you got to see this. So that was my first uh, my first thing I heard about Dontrell is he, he threw his first pitch right against the backstop. And obviously, he's just been tremendous since. I'll tell you a crazy moment. Remember the head first slide in the spring training game to home plate. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then he's, <laughs> he's, he's pulled a few more of those through the years. I remember uh, going into home plate head first, and that's always a fun moment. What do you see tonight, Larry, in, in Dontrell? Well, you see Dontrell. I mean, he's finishing his pitches. He's got good sync. He's got those ground balls when he needed them for double plays, and he's able to come in on pitchers, and he looks like Dontrell Willis. Off of Lily's foot, and Hermita is going to get to first base with a base hit. You have to be tickled with the progress of Jeremy Hermida here in the second half. Well, there's no question. You know, we always thought as an organization that this kid was going to hit. And, um, you know, he's been banged up, a little bit of bad luck over the last couple of years. And really here in the second half, I think he's uh, shown what he can do and what we thought he can do. And he's 23 years old. And he's only I mean, going to get better. Yeah, he has had uh, a, a terrific second half. But, I mean, the way he's hit left-handers, three hits tonight against Lilly. Well, he hit left-handers in the minor leagues, and that does, you know, it translates to the big leagues, Tommy, and it gets tougher in the big leagues off, uh, obviously, but uh, he's got a great hitting approach. He's got, you know, a good eye. He gets deep into counts. He's on base a lot, and uh, I think he's got a really great future. Miguel Cabrera now walked back in the first, flied out in the second inning. There have been some questions tonight, and one just popped up about uh, pitching coach and uh, Rick Kranitz will not be here next year and I know for for some of the Marlins Freddie Gonzalez talked about uh, the impact that Cranny had had on the young pitchers Kranitz wants to explore other opportunities next year well it's unfortunate but get out of here oh Cabrera deep foul oh. Oh. I can cheer it's okay oh, it? that, that, I tell you what that's <laughs> one of the fastest balls I've ever seen get to the upper deck <laughs> back to your question, Rich. It's, it's unfortunate. We wanted we wanted Rick back. Obviously, he had other things he wanted to take a look at, and you know we want people that are committed to this organization and want to be here. And we moved on. So we'll start our pitching coach search uh, when the season ends. But he did do a nice job. Um, I think he had a good relationship with our pitchers, and it is the business aspect of this game. O2 big breaking ball, strike three called. Cabrera goes down. And we haven't had a chance, uh, Rich, to congratulate 
the rest of the coaching staff because they'll all be coming back. Next no question. I think, you know, Freddie's done a nice job, and it's his first year in the big leagues. He had three rookie coaches, uh, Steve Foster and uh, Andy Fox and Bo Porter, and they all did a nice job. And, you know, he's very close friend and confidant and great baseball person, Carlos Tosca mm -hmm. on the bench. And Jim Presley, if you look at what the offense has done, um, you know, there's some things that we'd like to work on, strike out a little bit less and do some things with runners in scoring position. But Press has done a really nice job. So, you know, continuity is important. Uh, we're happy with the coaching staff. We'll get a new pitching coach, and we'll move on. Mike Jacobs, 0 for 2 in this ball game. How do you as an organization get better defensively? Because you've talked about it. Pitching and defense is what this organization is built on. And the pitching has been injured, and the defense has not been good. Well, you have to work at it, one. And I know that Andy has really worked with the infielders and Bo with the outfielders. And, you know, we have Tim Cousins and Freddie Gonzalez and people that have been catchers by trade working with our catchers. But... You just work at it, and uh, if these guys aren't able to do it, then we're going to need to change some things to find some people and improve our defense. Lindsay from Houston, Texas. We have emailers from all over the country wanting to know with the injuries to the starting rotation this year, which pitchers in the Marlins system are most likely to have a shot at the rotation next year? Well, I think you got a, a pretty good look at one of them, and that's uh, Rick Vandenherk. And uh, he did a superb job. Obviously, the numbers don't tell the whole story, but the way that kid handled himself, uh, competed, and the quality of his stuff, he showed that he could pitch in the big leagues. So he's very much in the mix. I think Gabby Hernandez in double-A uh, had a real nice year. I don't think Chris Volstad also finished up the year right up the street from Palm Beach Gardens, our first-round pick. I don't think he's far away. There's a bunch of kids in Jupiter that I'm sure a lot of our fans have read about, guys like Aaron Thompson and Ryan Tucker. Uh, Brett Sinkbell, our, our first-round pick from two years ago. So there's some pitching coming. We definitely have some injured pitchers here now. We have some guys that are going to be coming back in this current rotation, but there's some work to be done this winter, and uh, we'll get to work on it right away. Can you find pitching from outside of the organization? It's sure tough. If you go to trade for pitching that's, you know, affordable, one, or has some experience, it's going to cost you a lot in players, and if you try to buy pitching in free agency, it can be astronomical. So we have to find a way. Rule 5 draft, trades. Our own people, whatever it takes. 0 2 pitch. Olivo fouls it back. Ted Lilly is a, a good example of that. We were comparing him to, to Barry Zito, and, and people screamed when, when Lilly signed his contract, but he seems to have worked out a lot better than Barry Zito has in San Francisco. Well, again, you guys, uh, everybody can have their own opinion, and you don't know what organizations are thinking and what their um, abilities are to sign guys or what their needs are, and you kind of worry about yourself, but left handed pitching, left handed starting pitching. It's uh, a need throughout the game, and if you're a decent left-handed pitcher, it's easy to find a job. Well, the, the, the number certainly that you're aware of that, uh, that I read today, the, the five starters last year had 57 wins, and those same five guys, 21 wins this year. Right. And most of that because of injuries. Don Trell with just nine, and Scott Olson nine, but the rest mostly injured. Our offense is as good or a little bit better than last year. Our defense is almost equally as poor. It's really been about the starting pitching. And, you know, if you don't if you don't have the starting pitching, you're going to have a tough time. And sure enough, that's what happened to us this year. Or you're not on a pitch limit. Have you got another half inning left in you? No problem. All right. Larry returns after this. What is the big deal with the high school baseball team? They have a tradition here. It's about playing the game right. It was one of the greatest stories in American sports history. A town with a population of just 586. Most of these kids have already put in a full day's work at their farm. If you're a Norway baseball player, you're a hometown hero. We grow ball players in your life court. It's the state's position that small schools are a financial burden. There's more at stake here than closing the school. All your boys get to play one last season without you. I have no idea what you're trying to kill. Now, we're going to hire a coach who's going to take the team down with them. To become a team again. Some of the guys think you don't know what you're doing, coach. They will need courage. Nobody expects you guys to win anything this year. Discipline. Don't even bother coming out for the team. I heard you and my brother had some run-ins. What is going on? I mean, what's with you guys? And determination. Those smaller schools are absorbed by larger districts. They're turning into ghost towns. It's pretty old. Oh, it's twice your age, son. Now I'm giving it to you. This school is all the town has. We send a message to all the other schools. Norway isn't dead. Come on, Edgar, be a hero! Oh, Lee Toledo! 
they don't lose, you have a problem next season. We decide what happens out here, all right? Not the papers, not the people in town. When you face the impossible... Kids in small towns, they have something special. The only thing you can rely on... Unbelievable! ...is each other. Ask yourself one question. How do you want to be remembered? Click on the Marlins VIP Experience sweepstakes icon for your chance to win a D-Train autograph pack, including an autograph D-Train glove, a figurine, and a Dontrell baseball as well. FloridaMarlins.com. Ryan Terrio leads it off. Rich Waltz, Larry Beinfest in the booth, along with Tommy Hutton. This is a huge game for the Chicago Cubs. Many of their fans here tonight. The 0-1 from Willis. And a line shot into center field. There to make the catch is Brett Carroll. All right, both of you, I want you to react to some of the scores. We're going to take a look at, at some of the scores in baseball right now. I want to get your impression, and Tommy, your impression. First of all, uh, the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies. That game is tied now 4-4 in the fifth inning. Ryan Howard, Jason Worth, and Jimmy Rollins have homered in that game. No lead is safe in Citizens Bank, so hold on. All right, We've the, experienced that. The Milwaukee Brewers, Tommy, are off to a lead, and that's bad news for Cub fans. Well, all of a sudden, uh, Prince Fielder and Ryan Braun are on a tear again, too. I don't know if they've done anything tonight, but the uh, Brewers play so well at home. Prince Fielder has done something. He's homered again. What's that, 49? 49. Wow. How about those Washington Nationals who are beating the Mets 6-2? to two? They've done a nice job. They've hung in there. They battled. They played us tough. I know that. And, um... You know, they've just found a way to hang in there. That's in the fifth inning. Justin Maxwell is homered in that ball game. Tony Batista is homered. Austin Kearns is homered. 6-2, Nationals over the Mets in the fifth. He went around, Olivo tags him out. Cedeno, not real happy. And Dontrell Willis with his fifth strikeout, and that now ties A.J. Burnett for the all-time lead in Marlins history. Close call, sometimes you see it. So Daniel wasn't happy about it, but Dontrell's on a roll. We'll take it. Yeah. Alfonso Soriano. By the way, Justin Maxwell, he's a young kid who hit the uh, Grand Slam, his first uh, Major League hit. Yeah, that his second, the Marlins. second Major League homer. Willis out in front, 0-2. So Dontrell has tied A.J. He needs one strikeout. And he'll be all alone. I think one of the good signs, Larry, about Dontrell, the numbers you look, and, and we know he's had a bad year, but he's been healthy. And, and so when someone's healthy, you know he can be fixed. Well, no question, especially with his makeup, you yeah. know, the, way, the way he goes about his business and pre prepares and... And physically, you know what I mean? He's just a gifted person. And, uh, you know, we'd like to put our finger on it and say, this is exactly what happened this year to Dontrell. And I don't think anybody's been able to do that. And, you know, it's one of those things. And we've also, you know, he's had a few wins in line that, uh, you know, haven't come to fruition. But that never bothers him. He comes out and competes every fifth day. There it is. He's all alone. The all-time strikeout leader in Florida Marlins history. Passing A.J. Burnett. Dontrell Willis. Strikes out Soriano. Marlins lead it 4 nothing. I'm a student. I grew up in Philadelphia. What are you doing, sweetie? I am texting, Mom. But I go to school in Delaware. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, so you can see that they're My kidding. brother goes to school in Prague. Jak samaš Praho. I got a bunch of friends who study in Chicago. So I need a network that works where I live. A place called Philaware, Prague, Chicago. He's back. Yep. The new AT&T works in more places like Philaware, Praga, Cago. Now back to the fielder, Raul Ibanez. How many U's are in your name anyway? Sometimes five, sometimes eight. 
Bears baseball. My, oh, my. Hey, this is CC Sabathia of the Cleveland Indians. Struck him out. And you're on MLB.com, where baseball is always on. $1,000 Checkers Double drive through Challenge Award for spending the least amount of time on pit road. 315.217 seconds. Checkers congratulates the number 25 on the win. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Larry Beinfest watching Dontrell Willis shut down the Cubs. Michael Wirtz comes out of the Cubs bullpen. He takes over for Ted Lilly, who worked the uh, first five. All right, Larry, back to the email. Caesar wants to know. What's the likelihood of Cody Ross being next year's starting center fielder? Come on into spring training and compete. Um, Cody's a very smart player, very good outfielder, runs the base as well. Obviously, he's got a lot of power from the right side. Um, you know, he's done a lot of damage to left-handed pitching. You know, why not? He's shown that he can play. Uh, it's just a matter of staying healthy. You know, the hamstring's a little bit tight and he get, gets banged up from time to time. But a uh, very, very good player, whether he's in the lineup or coming off the bench. Linden takes a breaking ball for a strike. It's Linden, Carroll, and then Willis. As we move quickly to the bottom of the sixth inning, the Marlins four runs in the second, standing up right now on a splendid night from Dontrell Willis. I think it's interesting, even with a couple of minor injuries, you, you get to get a look at guys like Todd Linden and Brett Carroll even tonight. Well, that, you know, when you're not in the race, that's a little bit what September's all about. Obviously, we want to put our best nine out there and try to, especially when you're playing the Cubs, and make sure that you're doing your best to win. But it is an important time. And if these guys get opportunity, they have to take advantage of it. All right, Javier from Hialeah. What pieces do the Marlins need next year to become contenders? I think it starts on the mound. Um, you know, if you were asking me right now, I think the bullpen has been solid. I think that the right pieces are out there. I think we have some weapons both left and right, late and early. I think that it has the makings of a nice bullpen, and really the numbers bear that out. The starting pitching needs to stabilize. It needs to get healthy. It needs to be productive. We need to go back to our formula so our starting pitching gets us into the sixth inning or later and turn it over to a strong, shortened bullpen. The 3 Marlins, six innings every night. Looper being a fox, game over. Mm -hmm. We need to get back to where we were. What's the prognosis for uh, Anibal Sanchez? Well, he's doing much better. Obviously, he had the shoulder surgery, and he's, he's feeling well. He's been up at our Jupiter Complex rehabbing. He's throwing, and uh, we're hopeful he'll be ready to go in spring training and, and, and get back out there and compete. Dan wants to know, what are the chances of keeping Aaron Boone on the team next year? Well, I remember Aaron Boone. He was at... Uh, the first third baseman who came off the bench and did a great job for us. And uh, it was just unfortunate what happened to Booney. It was kind of a little bit the story of our whole year. We could never really get it going health-wise or consistently on the win column. And, uh, you know, that, that knee acted up. He had to have it fixed. But uh, what a pleasure he was to have on this ball club. We had Cody Ross on about a month after Boone went out of the lineup. And Ross said that he thought the clubhouse really missed Boone's leadership much in the way I guess a Wes Helms helped out last year. Well, there's no question. Your, your influence on the ball club is a little bit more when you are active and playing. When Booney went down, you know, he stayed with us and tried to rehab, and he did everything he could, but it's not like being involved every day. And, again, what I was saying earlier, Booney was just a, a tremendous asset here and uh, was a great influence on our young players. And we'll see what happens. He needs to get his knee healthy, and uh, I'm sure we'll keep in touch and see what, what happens next. Pedro from Hialeah wants to know, where is Ricky Nolasco, and what is his status? Ricky Nolasco obviously worked back from uh, injury. He had the uh, some forearm tightness that he had to work through that really ate up most of his year. Uh, came back and pitched late after a rehab assignment in Albuquerque and had very little success. He uh, was not throwing the ball. Um, and having the results that we would have liked. We're going to send him to the Arizona Fall League and uh, get some work. Obviously, it's a proving ground for double-A and higher players. And let him get some innings there and uh, show that he feels, you know, confident and comfortable again and then come back in the spring training and compete. We had an email, I think it was two starts ago, Tommy. Remember asking if Dontrell could go out and pull a Rick Ankeel and play in the outfield? What do you think? 
I think Dontrell could do just about anything. I think Dontrell could play basketball, play football. Or, uh, I think he's just an incredible athlete. You look at the way he can, he goes about the game, the way he runs the bases, the way he swings the bat. Um, obviously, he's pitching prowess. I think Dontrell could do anything. I think, you know, with the right training, et cetera, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. Now, it's not that easy, though. Just ask the guy <laughs> next to him. <laughs> 0-2 pitch. Dontrell, a ground ball the second. Strange hop. Rosa the first in time. Larry Beinfest, thanks for stopping by. You did a nice job of holding the lead. Great, guys. It's a pleasure. Great job this year on TV. We appreciate it. Hey, okay, thanks, Larry. Exactly. Larry Beinfest, general manager of the Marlins, who lead the Cubs 4 nothing. Andrew Miller from the Detroit Tigers. Here's the 1 2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Oh, brother. And you're on MLB.com, where baseball's always on. During the season, I watched Harris become an all-around team player. Wright puts his team first, so I put my team first. At first, Harris wasn't part of a team. Now she's the heart of it. Wright's an awesome player. He'll even catch the ball with his bare hands. Major League Baseball supports the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Here, kids learn values like teamwork. Of course it's about the team, but I did have five home runs and 45 base hits. Major League Baseball and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together, we create a positive place for kids. Steroids can really damage your body. They can cause tendons to tear and bones to stop growing, damage kidneys, destroy the liver, even cause heart attacks and strokes. Not to mention something else they can do to a guy's body. Find out more about the dangers of using steroids. Visit drugfree.org. Where were you when time stood still? Great plays, even better memories. Baseball's best moments, exclusively from MLB.com. Having a party? My friends and I are celebrating our new uh, calendar for bathing suits. You should come. Hey, right here with me. Come on, we got a big game at Turner Field tonight. I, I can't. Gatorade heard around the cooler brought to you by our friends at Gatorade. And before the game today, Isaac Litsky, you may recognize him, the guy on the left, a weasel from NBC Saved by the Bell. He is the head of the Hope for Vision organization, and he teamed up with Derek Lee before the game. Isaac, unfortunately, now not even 30, is blind. Throughout the first pitch today, Derek Lee, in case you may not know, his four year old daughter, Jader, is also blind and they're putting together this Hope for Mission organization. We're going to have more on the story tomorrow, guys. Give you some information on that. Uh, Derek Lee combining with Isaac. Quite a moment there before the game. And uh, Isaac, he's got a great personality. We're going to interview him as well tomorrow on deck. A lot of more information to raise money and awareness. Hope for Vision. Millions of Americans, guys, lose portions of their vision every day to do diseases with the eye. All right, thanks, Craig. And, of course, as we noted, Dontrell Willis has contributed to this man's foundation, the Project 3000 Foundation, and an extra 600 bucks tonight because Dontrell's got his six strikeouts, including Derek Lee back in the first. Well, Derek Lee is uh, now a member of the Screen Actors Guild. He'll be appearing on a, an episode of ER in uh, October. Drive to center. Carroll is there, and he makes the catch. Tommy, did you know that Corona is the official sponsor of the timeout? Do tell, and as you noted, a cameo in ER in October. Well, one of the reasons, too, that Derek is doing that, later on uh, down the road, ER is going to have an episode that partially will deal with the the congenital disease eye disease that his daughter has and so that's why he's doing the uh, the er episode where he'll play himself just a great guy one of the good people in this game dontro willis quickly through the seventh ramirez fouls it back to the screen this is the dontro willis of old and this is the Dontrell Willis who won 22 games in 2005. 
and had an ERA of 2.63 was the runner up to the Cy Young in 2005. Willis tonight has been splendid. Ramirez 0 for 2. Ground ball up the middle. Ugla to his right. Backhands. Whips it across and throws it away. It'll be an E4 with Ramirez aboard. Two outs here in the seventh. Well, just one of those little instances now where Dontrell's going to have to reach back, pick up his teammate, Dan Ugla. Dan made a good play to backhand this ball and then just kind of slung it over to first and out of the reach of Mike Jacobs. He had time. Ramirez not getting up the line quickly at all. He's not even in the picture. Matt Merton is 0 for 1. And he drives it into right. Hermida there, and he makes the running catch. Jeremy Hermida with a couple of plays out and right in the seventh, and Dontro Willis quickly going to the bottom of the seventh with a 4 0 lead. Bam! You! Slow down! Hey, you guys supposed to be in bed. Oh, yeah? Philadelphia Phillies. There's another one. Well out of here. And you're on MLB.com where baseball is always on. Okay, look. There's barbarians everywhere. It's very important. Focus. Eyes fully. Chin up. All right? Okay. And storm the castle. Storm the castle. Storm the castle. All right, back to your original position. Back to the starting position. Another perfect day at the park. Get a Coca-Cola family pack and enjoy four tickets, four Cokes, and four hot dogs for as little as $60. Hi, this is Cameron Lowe from the Texas Rangers. Exactly what's turned out to be. Boy, and that is a nasty pitch from Cam Lowe. And you're on MLB.com, where baseball is always on. Growing up, I used to spend my... Brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, it's in Major League Baseball. Is it in you? And by Valero, the energy to take you anywhere. Tonight brings us to Dolphin Stadium, where the Marlins and the Cubs are battling. The Cubs, their magic number to clinch the Central is at four. Three-game lead, six to play. However, Dontrell Willis is standing in their way right now. One hit through seven innings. That's all the Cubs have against Willis. Here's Hanley Ramirez against Michael Wirtz, a breaking ball for a strike. You can see the score. It's 4 nothing. If you're a Cubs fan that just happened by, and you say to yourself, ah, big deal. Magic numbers at four. Three up over the Brewers. Here's the 0-1. Hanley hits it in the air. Left center field. Monroe out there to catch it. If you're just saying that, well, here's a score for you. The Milwaukee Brewers right now, in the bottom of the third inning, have a 4-0 lead over the St. Louis Cardinals. Prince Fielder is 49th. Ricky Weeks is 13th. I know a lot of things have to happen, but the Brewers aren't going quietly. Now you got the feeling that Ned Yost will not allow that to happen. Here's Ugly. And Dan takes a, a fastball for a strike. Some other fascinating things happening tonight in baseball. The Philadelphia Phillies fell behind. What new there for the Phillies? And they've come roaring back to take a 5 4 lead over Atlanta, going to the sixth. 0 1 pitches down low. Jimmy Rollins is 30th. Ryan Howard is 43rd. Jason Worth his eighth. 5 4 Phillies going to the sixth over Atlanta. Uh, there have been some crazy things happening in pennant races. How about what happened to Milton Bradley of the San Diego Padres? Tore his ACL 
during well, an argument with the umpire. While being restrained by his manager. Bud Black trying to keep him away after he'd been ejected. And Bradley is out for the rest of the season. He could be out parts of next year as well. That one in the dirt. And it's two and two. Yeah, Bud Black just tried to grab him and spin him away from the umpire. And as Bradley went to the ground, he tore that ACL. And so much of the focus for Philly fans has been on the Mets, and with good reason. But now the focus is on the Padres because the Phillies and the Padres are tied in the wild card. The Padres have lost four in a row. They're back in San Francisco tonight. Terrio throws out Ugly. Well, if the Phillies were to win and the Mets lose, they'd only be one game behind the Mets then, too. Marlins got four runs in the second. After two were in and two were out, Jeremy Hermida chased home the final two. Well, it's been a big night for Jeremy Hermida. Two doubles, two RBIs on that one, and an infield single. He's three for three. 292. I'm telling you, Tommy, 300. He's got a week to go. He's got a shot. Here's the 0-1. Hermita slices it into the seats. We talked about his improvement first half to second half. Here are some of the guys that have had the big jumps. You can see Chris Snyder. The Diamondbacks he's been in for. How about Kevin Kuzminoff, who was just awful when the Marlins were in San Diego? Jack Wilson and Pat Burrell. And it's 0-2. Those Mets are losing tonight. 6-3 to three to the Nationals in the sixth inning. O2. Outside corner. Wirtz gets Hermita. Marlins down in order. Headed to the eighth. Dontre Willis shutting down the Cubs for nothing. What is the big deal with the high school baseball team? And they have a tradition here. It's about playing the game right. It was one of the greatest stories in American sports history. A town with a population of just 586. Most of these kids have already put in a full day's work at their farm. If you're an Oro baseball player, you're a hometown hero. We grow ball players here like corn. It's the state's position that small schools are a financial burden. There's more at stake here than closing the school. All your boys get to play one last season without you. I have no idea what you're trying to kill. Now, to hire a coach who's going to take the team down with them. To become a team again. Some of the guys think you don't know what you're doing, coach. They will need courage. Nobody expects you guys to win anything this year. Discipline. Don't even bother coming out for the team. I heard you and my brother had some run-ins. What is going on? I mean, what's with you guys? And determination. Those smaller schools are absorbed by larger districts. They're turning into ghost towns. It's pretty old. Oh, that's twice your age, son. Now I'm giving it to you. This school is all the town has. We send a message to all the other schools. Norway isn't dead. Come on, Edgar, be here! Oh, Toledo! They don't lose you have a problem next season. We decide what happens out here, all right? Not the papers, not the people in town. When you face the impossible. Kids in small towns, they have something special. The only thing you can rely on is each other ask yourself one question how do you want to be remembered marlins on top in the eight giovanni soto leads it off for the cubs with craig monroe ryan terrio scheduled against Dontro willis 92 pitches for willis as he works into the eighth misses down low and quickly it's two and oh to soto who had such a great year at AAA, the Pacific Coast League Player of the Year, but is 0 for 2 tonight. Well, I think just to show you the kind of job he's done, they went out and traded for Jason Kendall, veteran catcher, and Kendall's actually done a pretty good job, but Soto's just taken over. There's a strike from Dontrell. Jason Kendall, as a Cub, hitting 284 in his 52 game. The 3-1, and it's outside. 
And Chevy Road ahead as Soto ambles down to first base. High definition, FSM Florida for the Cubs tomorrow. Sun Sports on Thursday. It's a 4 o'clock start time, and it's on to New York for the final three games of the season. Here's Monroe. He is 0 for 2. Fastball a strike. Email from Mary, who last night during the stitch and pitch at the ballpark made a couple of Santa fan ornaments for Rich and Tommy. Drive to left field. Hit well. Linden looking up. Gone. Cubs have their first two runs. Craig Monroe. A two run shot here in the eighth, and the Cubs have life in South Florida. Well, we told you about the job Monroe did with the Tigers last year 28 home runs. His 12th start as a Cub, and that is his first home run as a Cub. And a no doubter. Mm. And that is going to send the Marlins bullpen into action. Here's Terrio. Steve Foster, the acting pitching coach for the Marlins. Tankersley and Miller getting ready. Cub fans trying to get their ball club involved here. A lot of them at Dolphin Stadium tonight. Left center field. Carroll races over and makes the catch. There's one out. To finish that last email, Mary sent up a couple of Christmas ornaments. Wanted to know if we got them. We did. Thank you. Mary, thank you. It'll be up on the tree. It's absolutely beautiful. Here is Jason Kendall. Kendall, a longtime major leaguer. And he was a first round draft pick back in 1992 for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Nine years with the Pirates, three seasons in Oakland. One of those guys who every year his name was on that list, toughest to strike out. He puts the ball in play. That one fouled at the plate. Email from John in Milwaukee. Huge Cub fan here. I've heard you guys announce numerous games over the last two years. Like the job that you do. Wondering if either of you could shed some light on what to expect from the Cubs starting rotation in the postseason. Here's the one two pitch to Kendall. He calls that one down the line. A foul ball. I think the Cubs have have a nice uh, rotation set up for postseason. Obviously they would like to and a lot of it depends on how the season goes down but they'd like to start I'm sure postseason with Carlos Zambrano. They're they're really pleased with the job. Ted Lilly has done he didn't last uh, more than five innings tonight but that gives you a righty and a lefty right off the bat whoever you play. Then you've got Jason Marquis and, and Sean Hill as well. And you can put in the back end of that rotation. Steve Traxel is the odd man out. He would probably be the swing guy, yeah. Kendall takes outside. Kendall, not a home run hitter. In fact, he's had some long droughts without homers in his career. In his last three seasons, he's hit just four home runs. And he's been an everyday player. The 2-2. But make no mistake, he's a good hitter. He's a career 297 hitter. Lots of line drives. Lots of line drives. Numerous years of batting averages of over 300. Ground ball, Cabrera to his right. Fires across in time to get Kendall. So there's two outs up to the top of the order, and Alfonso 
Soriano and important to face him for Willis Tommy without a runner on base and keep him from being the tying run because he's hurt the Marlins certainly as a national last year. Well there there's no question about that he's he's eight for 20 now against Don Crow with a home run. But yeah he's a guy that with one swing if someone was on base he could tie it so good to face him with nobody on base. Willis misses outside. Soriano has struck out twice and flied out. Last year with the Nationals, Soriano, a 40 40 guy. 46 home runs, 41 stolen bases. Willis trying to get through the eighth here, and Olivo is on his way out to the mound to try to help him through. We dive back into our emails on an email Tuesday night as this season draws to a close. I'd like to reflect on my favorite meltdowns. This year, mine has to be Carlos Zambrano laying the smackdown on his teammate Michael Barrett. Last week, Lasting's Millage, Milton Bradley. What are your favorite meltdowns this year? That's from Amy. Here's the school of this. And it's two and one. I, I think the minor league guy that tossed the rosin bag, <laughs> Phil Wellman. Yes, that's uh, that's our favorite. Yeah. The two one pitch. And it's fouled into the seats. Atlanta has a couple runs in the sixth and leads Philadelphia six five now. 2 2 pitch ground ball foul ball and it stays at 2 and 2 if you've just joined us Carlos Zambrano and the Cubs here with a magic number of four there is their big horse Zambrano on the year 17 wins Willis is 2 2 he got Strikes out Soriano. An emotional Dontrell Willis. Facing an organization that traded him when he was in the minor leagues. And Willis right now beating the Cubs 4-2. I work in the movies. It's Monty. Later. I'm a kind of star, I guess. I live in Hollywood, but I work on Broadway in New York. Thank you, thank you. In Tombstone, Arizona. A part of South America you might not have heard of. Hi. Hi, Klaus. And London, England. Hi, I'm in the middle of something. Hi. So, I need a network that works where I live. A place called Holly York, Arizona, South of Maryland. Monty. Monty. What's the deal? The new AT&T works in more places like Holly York, Arizona, South of Maryland. Hi, uh, this is Jimmy Rollins of the Philadelphia Phillies. Home run, Jimmy Rollins! And you're on MLB.com, where baseball is always on. Two here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Freddy Gonzalez looking at his lineup card, the Papa John's delivery of the game. Yeah. Dontrell Willis with that strikeout moved into sole possession yeah. of the Marlins' career strikeout record. Passing A.J. Burnett, Papa John's reminds us you don't have to travel to Italy to experience authentic Italian taste. Their new Italian meats trio pizza. Get a large for $11.99. Call or order online now. Well, as we watch Kevin Hart get loose, we're pretty sure that Don Trell is not going to be coming back. And I'm not sure if we talked about it before, 
but Kevin Gregg is not available for this game tonight. So it looks like uh, Lee Gardner's down there loosening up to get ready for the ninth inning. Yeah, Gardner in the pen, getting ready. Here's Cabrera. There's a look at Gardner. There's a look at Cabrera with Jacobs and Olivo to follow. Ted Lilly started with the first five innings. Marlins got four runs, all of them coming in the second inning. And a breaking ball from Hart, a strike to Cabrera. Milwaukee 4-1 over St. Louis in the fourth. Rolled towards second. And there's one out. We check in with Craig. Hey, Rich, this is actually Florida Chicago part two today in the world of professional sports. What am I talking about? This afternoon at the Bank Atlantic Center, the Florida Panthers are hitting action against the Chicago Blackhawks preseason hockey. And it's Corey Murphy from the point, sending up Ole Jokinen. Ole had two goals in the third period. The Panthers are four and one in the preseason. Our opening night is upcoming. That's just a week from Thursday, nine nights away at Madison Square Garden against the Rangers, the home opener. Coming up one week from Saturday, the Panthers and the Devils at the Bank Atlantic Center. The Cats are having a good preseason, and I know it's going to be an exciting year, guys. All right, thanks, Craig. It's Mike Jacobs to face Kevin Hart in the bottom of the eight. The Marlins on top of the Cubs, 4-2. I'll tell you what, Kevin Hart was uh, on a roll his last 17 games in Triple A before his call up. His last 17 games, he was 10 and 1 with an ERA of 280. Cubs have had very good bullpen action this year as well. I know that Ryan Dempster at the end of the ball game at times has, has struggled. But you look at the middle of the Cubs bullpen, and that was one of the turning points too, Tommy. When when the Marlins swept them in, in late May, things turned around for them. Part of that was that middle relief. Well, one of the guys that's really been a standout lately has been Carlos Marmol. Has just been tremendous with an ERA of 1.22. I think he's the best kept secret yes. in the National League. And I talked to Lou Pinella about Marmol, and he agreed. He said, Marmol is the guy that he will use when he needs three outs. It doesn't matter if it's in the sixth inning or if it's in the eighth inning or the seventh. If they have three tough outs, Marmol is on the mound. Olivo. Miguel tonight double back in the third. So the Cubs lead three games in the central. The Brewers just trying to, to stay afloat. And Milwaukee winning 4-1 right now in the fourth. Marlins on top of the Cubs here, 4-2. Olivo gets into that one and drives it to center field. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Second double of the night for Olivo. Including these games tonight, there are six left. And here's where Milwaukee sits at three back. But if the Marlins win this game, and they're up 4-2 here in the bottom of the eighth. And the Brewers win their game. They're a ways away. It's 4-1 in the fourth. It could be down to two games. But then things get really interesting. The Brewers have got the Padres coming in for four. Which is an oddity in the schedule. And, of course, the Padres are... Fighting tooth and nail, tied with Philadelphia for the wild card lead in the National League. And it could be sink or swim for San Diego at that time. Todd Linden, a one for three night. Our Geico quote of the night from the skipper Lou Pinella. We're in the sprint. There's no question. You can see the finish line. It is right there 
ahead of us. And there's a guy that has been to the postseason and won it all as a player and as a manager. In 1990 with the Cincinnati Reds. The 1-1. And it's 1-2. and two. He won two world championships and played in two other World Series as a member of the New York Yankees. There's a Levo. There's two down. Kevin Hart trying to keep it at two. A one two. Got him. Hart strikes out Linden. And the Marlins will turn to Lee Gardner for the save. What is the big deal with the high school baseball team? They have a tradition here. It's about playing the game right. He was one of the greatest stories in American sports history. A town with a population of just 586. Most of these kids have already put in a full day's work at their farm. If you're an Oro baseball player, you're a hometown hero. We grow ball players a year like corn. It's the state's position that small schools are a financial burden. There's more at stake here than closing the school. All your boys get to play one last season without you. I have no idea what you're trying to kill. Now, to hire a coach who's going to take the team down with them. To become a team again. Some of the guys think you don't know what you're doing, coach. They will need courage. Nobody expects you guys to win anything this year. Discipline. Don't even bother coming out for the team. I heard you and my brother had some run-ins. What is going on? I mean, what's with you guys? And determination. Those smaller schools are absorbed by larger districts. They're turning into ghost towns. It's pretty old. Oh, that's twice your age, son. I'm giving it to you. This school is all the town has. We send a message to all the other schools. Norway isn't dead. Come on, AJ, be here! Holy oh, Toledo! They don't lose you have a problem next season. We decide what happens out here. All right, not the papers, not the people in town. When you face the impossible, kids in small towns, they have something special. The only thing you can rely on is each other ask yourself one question how do you want to be remembered list of cable and satellite providers offering fsm florida hd along with channel numbers log on to fsmflorida.com ninth inning has arrived kevin gregg is not available lee gardner who has done just about everything for the marlins this year is called upon to save this game into the teeth of the Cubs order two three four in the Cubs order well we've talked about all the roles that Lee Gardner has filled he has one save this year as Jason Wood comes in and a double switch to play first base his one save was his first major league save and it happened on April 8th against the Philadelphia Phillies Mark DeRosa Derek Lee, Aramis Ramirez. Dontrell Willis, eight innings, two hits, two runs, 114 pitches for Willis. Third time a Marlins starter has gone eight innings this year. No Marlins starter has gone into the ninth inning. Dontrell, Scott Olson, and Sergio Mitre, eight innings. Marlins, one of three teams in the majors that do not have a complete game this year. There's a strike from Gardner. The Nationals and the Rangers and the Marlins, just in case, Taylor Tankersley, Moro Zarate. One, one. Gardner with that slow breaking ball, something, Tommy, he's added to his arsenal as the season's gone along. Yeah, that has been a nice addition over the last month and a half. Usually sinkers and sliders, but we've seen him break out that slower breaking ball. And by the way, for Mets fans, Moise Salou is two for three tonight to extend his hitting streak now to 29 games. One, two pitch. Barosa pokes it into the seats, but the Mets are trailing 6 3 in the bottom of the sixth to those pesky Washington Nationals, and that's certainly what Freddie Gonzalez would like to be able to call his club 
for these next six games. Heskey. Disruptive. One, two. He got him outside corner. One down here in the ninth. The roast is not happy. Target is out there. Borderline, but he got the call, and home plate umpire Andy Fletcher's kind of given that pitch all night. The skipper's not happy. Derek Lee. Strike one. You know, we've talked about it before, but we just haven't had a lot of opportunities because Lee Gardner hasn't had save opportunities but that's what he did last year in the minor leagues in Toledo with the Tigers he did it well he did it extremely well he had 30 saves for Toledo last year so it's not a role that he's not done before it's 130 career saves in the minor leagues here's the one one and I think we talked about it at different times this season. Gardner's ERA stacks up. There's Marmol. We were talking about his year with the Cubs. If Gardner last year is pitching for just about any other team in AAA and has the type of year that he had, he would have been in the big leagues. But the Tigers were stacked in the rotation and in their pen. And so he ended up having a, a very good year in AAA for Detroit. Breaking ball in the left field. A base hit. And the tying run comes to the plate. Many Cub fans coming to their feet. And you talked about it. A, a couple of guys who have been on fire. Derek Lee and now Aramis Ramirez. There's that breaking ball that D. Lee with a solid swing. Ramos Ramirez has hit three home runs in his last three games, too. 26 on the season. A home run can tie it. A ground ball could end it. Well, the Marlins turned a couple of double plays behind Don Trell. Gardner's 1-0. Outside corner. That's the same pitch that DeRosa went down on. That's what you have to look for if you're if you're Ramirez. You have to realize a guy two hitters before you got called out on that pitch, and you have to realize the umpire's calling it. And if you're Gardner and Olivo, why not go out there again? One one. That one just missed. Tried to sneak one in, fastball in on him, just to keep him honest and keep him from leaning out over. Two one. That's out, and it's three and one now. Got another right-handed bat on deck in Matt Merton. But plenty of lefties on the bench to pinch it. And some lefties with some pop. That's why Tankersley is up and ready. Three-one. 
Three and two. That's what's going through Luke Pinella's mind right now. If it gets to that pinch hitter, if he pinch hits a Cliff Floyd or a Jock Jones, then Freddie goes to Tankersley, so he may rather stay with Matt Merton, who's been in the game against Lee Gardner. Full count, one out. In the air, right center, Carroll is over. Two down. Here comes Merton. And Aramis Ramirez has been tossed out of the ball game. Here comes Pinella to say his piece, but Ramirez, as he walked past Andy Fletcher, the home plate umpire, he said, What happened was well, so many times a hitter early in the count when he has a pitch called on him that he doesn't like, and then eventually makes an out, he assumes that it was that pitch that caused him to make the out. And uh, the thing continues to boil over and the fact that he was walking back and he's close he's talking to Merton he really didn't say anything to the home plate umpire he said something to Merton and then just looked back that's a quick trigger on uh, Andy Fletcher's part at least he didn't go all Milton Bradley on him yeah that's uh, I mean he may have dropped the uh, the magic word but <laughs> Maybe he said to Merton, hey, you tell him, <laughs> blankety, blankety, blank. Tell him what I thought about that strike call. Well, it looks like Luke Pinella is going to the bench. We talked about the uh, many left-handers. Cliff Floyd certainly being one. Darrell Ward's down there, Jack Jones. Now, Freddie Gonzalez wants to know, has, has he been announced yet? And as soon as he is... And home plate umpire Fletcher nods yes. Yep. And so Freddie's going to make the move to go get Tankersley. So Gardner gets a couple outs here in the ninth. But with the tying run coming up, looking like Cliff Floyd, Gonzalez is going to go get Tankersley. Here's our Marooney called to the bullpen. When you need a car, truck or van. Who's going to call? Marooney! Better, Frank. Hold on. I'm a salesman. I work in Virginia, but I do business in Colorado, Sacramento. Fly me in a little lower. Flagstaff in San Antonio. So I need a network that works where I live, a place called Virgicalamento Flag Antonio. Frank, I'm back. The new AT&T works in more places like Virgicalamento Flag Antonio. Growing up, the Boys and Girls Club was a safe place where I was taught important lessons, like being part of a team. Teammates learn to play together, work together, and stick together. Major League Baseball and Boys and Girls Clubs of America understand the importance for kids to have a safe place to learn and grow. Teamwork is what made us World Series champions. And the White Sox have won the World Series. Major League Baseball is a proud sponsor of the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together, they create a positive place for kids. Hey, this is Coco Chris with the Boston Red Sox. Coco doing it again. Out in right center. You're on MLB.com where baseball is always on. Both dugouts. Cliff Floyd with the bat, Taylor Tankersley with the ball. And that's the matchup here in the ninth with the Marlins on top. 4 2. Tank with that uh, nice uh, record. Had three saves last year, but looking for his first save this year. And he's got a tough uh, customer in Cliff Floyd. We talked about the lefty lefty matchup. Coming into this season, Cliff, a 272 hitter against left handed pitching. 
And Tankers lead very good this year against lefties. 176. That's what lefties are hitting against this particular lefty out of the University of Alabama. Cliff Floyd, an all star with the Marlins in 2001. Big breaker is outside. Floyd lives here in Plantation. Grew up in suburban Chicago. Had a painful year last year with the Mets. Achilles problems most of the year. 97 games. Cliff has had a painful career. A lot of a lot of DL time. You know what? He's had a painful year this year. He lost his father and had to deal with that during the season, and that's not easy. Tankersley misses. And it's 2-0. and oh. The key always for Tank, and he hasn't done it here, is getting ahead because we saw him in those matchups against Ryan Howard, the Phillies. Getting ahead and then putting him away with that slider, just tantalizing him slider after slider. Cliff that time missed a fastball. Counts two and one. A tight game on an email Tuesday. Sometimes when we have a blowout, we get lots of emails in. This obviously a tight game, so we apologize if we've been unable to get to your email tonight. Taylor Tankersley trying to get Cliff Floyd. Hey, we don't apologize for this game, though. This has been an exciting game. Two down. Two and two. Cub fans and Marlin fans on their feet. Tankersley looks in. Lee's at first. 2-2 two, two to Floyd. Line in the left center field. Long run Carroll. He is there and he makes the catch. Ball game. Tankersley saves it with help from Gardner. Dontrell Willis wins it. And the Marlins beat the Cubs in game one of this three-game series. Magic number still at four with the Brewers winning right now. Marlins beat the Cubs.